Hello, my name is Andrew Santangelo, Chief Technology Officer of SciZone, and I would like to share with all of you today the Linkstar Cybersecurity CubeSat Sandbox. It is a platform to test CubeSat vulnerabilities with the small satellite community. Before I begin, I'd like to talk about our contributors to this project. It got its inception at the Ascend 2020 Space Conference, where we were having our CubeSat Cybersecurity Workshop. The team comprised of Arun Viswathan from JPL, Greg Falco from Stanford, Jeremy Straub from North Dakota State University, Michael Ingham from JPL, and Steve Lee from AIAA. Uh, we realized we had a need for a platform to test and demonstrate and understand uh, issues related to cybersecurity in small satellites and CubeSats. And we couldn't really use something commercial like Amazon Web Services due to licensing and legal issues. So uh, I was selected uh, to take advantage to create the, take our Linkstar CubeSat system with our QuickSat VMS and to take a cube, actual CubeSat and create it as a test platform for uh, like a hackasat or be able to hack the satellite, understand the satellite, how, what are the vulnerabilities for a CubeSat and small satellite and do it in a contained sandbox environment. And I'd like to thank these individuals for starting this whole process and setting, it, setting this work on an exciting path. So let's quickly go over the situational landscape, which you all are familiar with. CubeSats are, can be found in scientific missions, military operations, educational uh, missions, commercial enterprise, and even civic operations and hobbyists. Even a hobbyist can take a small satellite and put it into orbit. Now, we see the range, uh, when we see this range, we also see a range of vulnerabilities in these CubeSats. Anywhere you can have, certainly your military operations will have secure CubeSats in orbit, but maybe not as secure on an educational mission or a hobbyist mission, even a commercial mission. With all that though, even military missions can be vulnerable in low Earth orbit with these CubeSats. And this CubeSat market is growing, is a growing place. And this, uh, this slide's now a little dated, but as, for example, you can see with the communication side, that number is exploding uh, due to Star, uh, Starlink and SpaceX Starlink systems going into orbit. But the point is, we now have a growing market with a, a large market with potential vulnerabilities to cyber attack. So another way to look at CubeSats is they are the Internet of Things in space. So as you see in these, this summary picture here, uh, we have Spot X talking with satellites where you can get send messages and get your location. Uh, CubeSats can be used for uh, pipeline monitoring, power grids, uh, windmills tracking. You can use them also for tracking people working in the field, uh, fighting forest fires, or payloads being deployed from aircraft, or even used by the warfighter. The bottom line is CubeSats are simply an Internet of Things in space. But there is a problem with all this growth in CubeSats and small satellites, and all these devices being used for a range of functions, is that vulnerabilities in satellites of all sizes, including CubeSats, exist. We need to understand constantly the changing landscape of cybersecurity. We need to identify the vulnerabilities in these CubeSats and small satellites. And we need to share lessons learned, and with that, need for collaboration in the community. To understand the whole uh, idea of a space system is you need to look at the components of a generic space system. And the Space Policy Directive 5 defines a space system as three key components a ground segment, which contains operations to support, the link segment, focusing on ground to space communications and space back to ground, and the space segment, which can cover Earth orbiting satellites, planetary probes, deep space vehicles, and even vehicles maybe on Mars communicating with satellites, or multiple satellites communicating with each other in that space segment. Each of these segments represent a vulnerability uh, to a cyber attack, malicious attacks to uh, bring something down or repurpose it or even steal data. This is a very small sample of some cyber incidents against space systems. For example, in April 2005, a rogue program penetrated NASA KSC networks, gathering data from the computers in the vehicle assembly building. In 2007, several APT groups have been using and abusing satellite links to manage their operations. And from a space segment point of view, in July 2008, there was actually an attempted hijacking 
of a, sol a large satellite actually in orbit and they were actually attempting to remotely command that the satellite. So when we think of CubeSats and their vulnerabilities, there's high level threats against any really satellites besides CubeSats. For example, and I, I, these table, tables I'm including from the 2020 Ascent Conference, they summarize very well what those threats can be, and you can read them uh, on your off time. But basically, some of the threats include unauthorized control. Uh, uh, an attacker can take over a CubeSat and uh, remotely control that vehicle. Or they can access that CubeSat and change and modify and corrupt that data. So you may get a you're trying to measure uh, temperatures and you may get a temperature you weren't expecting or you're accepting that as the gospel but actually that's been a data that's been modified by the attacker. You can also have interception of data where the hacker uh, actually analyzes wiretaps, looks at that data, steals at that data and it can happen in the space segment, the ground segment or even the space link segment. On the other side of the coin besides intercepting data a uh, cyber attack could include jamming that data, so we can't get that data up to the satellite or back to the ground. Another example of threats against CubeSats and small satellites, or really any satellites, is a dy denial service attack where you're bombarding uh, that satellite uh, with either data, taking up the bandwidth, disk storage, and memory, or even the routers. And this could be, again, the space segment or the ground segment, and then we can, can't talk to that satellite at all. Or, it can be masquerading as an employee, uh, copying an employee's information, uh, login information, and then accessing, and then you won't know, is it your employee or is it uh, someone who's doing a malicious attack on that satellite? And of course, there's a whole other range of threats, uh, software threats, and even in the supply chain, for example, those printed circuit boards that go on the satellites could have been uh, stolen or even adapted, and then be used to control once that vehicle is in space. Again, there's a range, high, range of high-level threats, and this is just a sample of those threats that can happen to CubeSats. Because of this, uh, this need of wanting to understand what those threats are, especially with CubeSats, and to be able to share this with the community, we created, uh, out, out of it came from the Ascend 2020 conference, was the Linkstar QuickSat Cybersecurity CubeSat Sandbox, an environment where it is an actual CubeSat that's set up in our labs that is talking with its network, satellites in space, down to the ground, into through the ground segment, right, uh, link segment down to the ground segment. So we can emulate what a CubeSat goes through and look at ways of attacking it and what are the vulnerabilities in that CubeSat and how we can patch up those vulnerabilities. So what you see here in this diagram with these swim lanes is the typical Linkstar QuickSet operation setup that covers all those three segments of a typical space vehicle. So we have uh, on the space segment side, we have the satellite itself on the left, which includes our QuickSat vehicle management system, which is an interface into the, uh, the CubeSat and its flight management system. There's a range of uh, APIs and databases and even files on board the uh, CubeSat that operates it for a typical mission in space. And then we have the satellite with the radio, and that's the Linkstar duplex radio, which is two-way communication. So again, this CubeSat is actually communicating with its network and other satellites in space to a ground station and then to the uh, mission control for the operators. We also have the Linkstar tracker simplex radar, which beacons information and GPS data to the ground. A part of this whole uh, architecture of the sandbox, we are tying in through the Global Star Satellite Network uh, and uh, getting as part of the ground uh, link segment from the satellite uh, to the ground. Uh, but I should say this part is secure and is not set up for a cyber attack since we're using part of an active network that commercial customers use. On the ground segment side, we have uh, the AWS servers typically, but for our sandbox, we have special services uh, right, right here at SciZone that are set up for understanding and learning uh, security vulnerabilities in CubeSats, including in the ground segment. Um, and then, of course, what successful things are learned are 
and what pr protection we can put into the ground segment that is put into our commercial AWS servers. This ties in then to the user operator side through a desktop, a web browser, a tablet interface, even a smartphone uh, can tie into the ground segment of our environment. And then we have access through terminals, either through a desktop interface or uh, a simple terminal to look at the files that are on board on the ground segment side that are also going up to the satellite and coming down from the satellite. So this is truly, this sandbox is a true CubeSat that thinks it's in orbit and functioning and communicating through the link segment down to the ground segment. So here's another view of the LinkStar QuickSat architecture. On the left is the, uh, the CubeSat side where we have the Francis P flight computer and QuickSat VMS going through the duplex radio system and the simplex system. You can see pictures of those boards in the center part of the screen going through the Global Star network through a Global Star gateway and then Typically, it goes to an AWS or AWS GovCloud, but in our case, for our sandbox, it's going through SciZone Secure uh, Sandbox servers. And then, of course, you have the QuickSat VMS ground station view of the data. A little comment about QuickSat uh, vehicle management system. It is a complete flight management system with vehicle health management and monitoring. You can do vehicle commanding services. You can do communication services. There's a trust testing framework with QuickSat. And it can serve as a standalone ground station, or it can be expanded, expanded and enhanced for, with example, custom processes, custom commands, and even uh, custom web-based interfaces. So it's a very flexible environment. It utilizes open source software where possible and works on a range of flight hardware and software. The, uh, it has a web-based interface, both to the satellite site and on the ground segment. So you can use PCs, tablets, and smart devices. So let's look at the components of the LinkStar architecture from a hardware point of view. Uh, it really works off of a couple different co computers. Uh, we either use the BeagleBone, a modified BeagleBone Black, industrial BeagleBone Black, or BeagleBone AI, or on the more high-end side, we're integrating in Xilinx Sync UltraScale MPSOC flight computers. That's a hybrid of a ARM53 processor with an FPGA. And this is more geared towards uh, more larger CubeSats, small sats, and full, you know, thousand kilogram satellites even going way beyond CubeSats. It uh, starts at a half U form factor, runs up to four watts or more, depending on the usage, uh, especially when you're using the ultra scale MPSOC. It has built in wall chart timers, external signal reset, and a hypervisor in it. QuickSat resides on the computer, which can be both the Zinc computer, the BeagleBone, you can even use Raspberry Pis, and you can use several of these computers on one system. In our architecture, we're starting right now with BeagleBone Black and BeagleBone AI in our sandbox, but we can swap out other computers in our framework. Uh, the architecture of the sandbox is set up using LinkStar Tracker and our duplex radio, and eventually adding our high speed radio, and it can even work with S and X band radios or KA bands, whatever uh, your choice is for a radio. There's even an Ethernet connection to make it think it's talking through the radio, but it's actually talking through an Ethernet connection. Uh, we can hook, hook up a range of sensors and actuators. We do have a camera on it. Uh, we do run both the Adafruit Ultimate GPS and the Novatel OEM 719 on our sandbox system. So we try and create a complete system and we can swap in and out different sensors and hardware into this system to also test another, to test again vulnerabilities even when sensors and actuators are changed. So what have we learned to date in this very short time since we created this whole sandbox? Uh, besides, CubeSats are the internet of things of space. Despite, despite CubeSats being small, they are highly calibrated machines that are sensitive to attack and needs to be, and, and cyber attack has to be, and malicious attacks and a range of issues need to be considered. The type of attacks against CubeSats are not significantly different than attacks to other cyber physical control systems. It's just now these are in space and we have other segments, a link segment and a ground segment. Also, we've learned traditional health monitoring monitors for satellites can be used to evaluate security and of the CubeSat as well as the ground segment. So, and this is just the beginning. Our goal is to have is expand this uh, family of test cases and go out to the community to start using our LinkStar CubeSat Sandbox. And this goes to uh, 
our test servers to hack, as we like to say. Uh, the virtual machines have been set up at, in the SciZone QuickSat cloud environment for testing and exploring. And to get started, you want to go to the link that you see on this video here, SciZone.com, CubeSat hyphen cybersecurity hyphen challenge. And the goal is for uh, our community to probe, explore, push, and hack that environment. We want to learn and then share that with the community or within our community. Now to get access to this uh, cybersecurity sandbox you'll need to act, uh, uh, contact me to request access and you see my uh, email here on the screen Andrew underscore Santangelo at sci-zone.com. Again as we probe and work and hack into this environment in the sandbox feedback from the participants is welcome and we'd like to share our knowledge with the community to understand what these vulnerabilities are so we don't have this problem when the CubeSats go in orbit. The results will be shared with the CubeSat and Small Satellite and AIAA community. I'm really excited about this as we grow this environment and expand it to the community and learn what these vulnerabilities are and share these vulnerabilities to the community. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Andrew Santangelo, Chief Technology Officer of SciZone, and thank you very much for attending my presentation.